All right, welcome back everyone. So in today's tutorial, we're going to model this bullet you see here. So this is a 45 millimeter natal round. And I grabbed the image from uh, this wiki page over here. So this one over here, so here's the image. So if you wanna use the same one, you can, or you can find um, your own reference. Um, I'm just gonna close that down. And then I'll, I also have some other images as well, um, just of some different angles of the bullet. So some of these are the 45 millimeter. Over here you see the bullet, this is the shell casing. And um, I just want to take a look at closer at the bottom as well as how thick that shell casing was and the bottom of the bullet where the primer is. It's right here. All right, let's begin. So for um, modeling this bullet, we're gonna start off with a cylinder and um, I'm just gonna add it into the scene for now. Also this image, I loaded it into the front view um, over here, I set it um, on its own layer and I set it to a reference layer so I don't accidentally select it. And I'll post a link on how to set up um, reference images down below in case you're not sure. Um, so here's my cylinder in the scene. And the first thing I'd like to do is kind of decide on how round and smooth and realistic we want the bullet to be. And um, so if you're going for like a realistic, like a um, product shot or a close-up, you may want something around 32 subdivisions or even more. Um, however, I'm gonna go with 24. So that would be the bottom. And for the top section, um, I'm gonna make them separately. And the reason for that is I wanna subdivide the top section so that we have a nice smooth curve to it. But the bottom, I don't need to do that. So rather than do like add holding edges and have to remove a lot of extra loops, um, we'll make it separate and then we'll combine it. All right, so let's start. Um, so over here, here's my um, cylinder. I'm just gonna move it up here for now. And then what I would like to do is lower the subdivisions because each time we subdivide, it's going to double it. So I'm gonna press T on the keyboard. And what I say, the bottom will be 24. I'm not even sure if I said it, but it's gonna be 24. And so for the top, I'll make it 12. There we go. I'll turn on um, Let's see, let's do X-ray, and we'll turn on wireframe and shaded, which is over here. And then um, then let's scale this down. Also, let's move this pivot to the bottom of the cylinder. So I'm gonna hold down D, then V, click and drag, let go, and now just move it up. All right, and I wanna move it to the top of that shell casing. And I'll go with something like this and up a little bit. And maybe a little bit more. All right, so here is my cylinder. What I would like to do next is grab the faces on the top. So I'm gonna hold down the right mouse button just to go into face selection. Um, these are the different component modes, right? And then um, I'm gonna do a drag select. So I'll hold down the tab key and drag those. And something I like to do when I'm selecting multiple components is I'll press four on the keyboard to go into wireframe and I'll just orbit around, make sure I grabbed what I wanted and I'll press five to go back, All right? So now let's move this down to about right here. We're gonna create some sections, but I'm gonna scale this in a little bit. And then I would like to extrude that up. So um, you can get to your extrude tool through the modeling toolkit if you want. I'll use the marking menu. So I'll hold down shift and the right mouse button, extrude, bring this up to about right here. I'll press G to repeat, bring this up um, maybe one more, maybe to here. And then up here, I'll press G to repeat. Go to about right here, scale it in. And then one more. So go right to about right here. All right, push that down a little bit. So now if we press three in the keyboard to preview smooth, that's what it looks like. And I think that looks pretty good. Maybe I'll lift this up a little bit. Um, you can see the image is a little bit blurry, so that's close enough. I'll press one to go back. And then in this view, um, let's take a look. So in this view, what we wanna do is just press three and make sure that it looks nice and smooth. So, and I think that looks pretty good. Right, you'll need to probably play with um, some of these edge loops a little bit, um, just so that um, it looks smooth. 
So in my case, it looks pretty good, but I just wanna make sure. So I'm gonna select this. I'm gonna hold down the right mouse button, choose assign new material, and I'm gonna give it a blend. Turn off the grid as well. And then let's just take a look. And you can see there's a bit of a star pattern there, right? So let's see if we can fix this a little bit. So over here, what we can do is maybe lift up that edge a little bit, just closer to the top there. And we can just scale it in a little bit as well. So let's take a look. And I think that looks better already. Yep, yeah, looks better. And um, we can even grab that top vertex and let's move it up a little bit. There we go. All right, looking better. Um, let's see here, I'm just trying to frame in on this. I'll select this one, press F to frame in on it. So now I can orbit and, and I think that looks pretty good. Okay, so now let's take a look over here. If we press three, that's what it looks like. Press one to go back. And now um, what I can do is just give it back the Lambert material. Um, assign existing material Lambert. There we go. And um, we're ready to subdivide that, but we don't need the faces on the bottom. So let's go into face selection, hold down the tab key again, grab all those. And then I'll just delete those. All right. And now let's subdivide this. So if we take a look at this right now, let me just... Uh, bring up our poly count display, windows, um, sorry, display, heads up display, poly count. And if we go into edge selection, grab these, you can see we have 12. So now let's smooth this. So make sure you're in object mode, select it, and we'll smooth it for real, just to one level. And now we have, um, sorry, let's go into edge selection. And now we have 24, awesome, because we'll need it to match the bottom section if we are to bridge them together. All right, so now um, let's create the bottom section. So um, yeah, that's fine. We'll add another cylinder into the scene. So here's my cylinder. And with this one, I'll press T on the keyboard and I wanna give this one, um, what I say, 24? There we go. And now let's move this up. Again, we'll move the pivot to the bottom. So hold down D, then V. Click, drag that down. And I'll bring it back the grid for a second. And I want to snap it to that ground plane. So hold down X on the keyboard and snap it down there where my reference is. And I'll just scale this down to about right here. Now bring this up just to about right here. Let's take a look. I think that looks pretty good. I'll just go into vertex selection, maybe move this down a little bit. And now over here, let's grab those faces at the top. We'll do a drag select. There we go. And then over here, let's extrude that up. So extrude, bring this up to about right here where that angle breaks. And then we'll bring this into about right here. All right, and keeping in mind that this is a bit of a blurry image, right? So we just wanna give this, you know, not too thick of a shell casing, right? So I have those uh, faces selected. Um, I just extruded, so I should be able to press G to repeat my last command. There we go. I'll bring this up to about right here. And um, I said I don't wanna make that too thick, so we can either make the bullet a little, little bit larger or bring this part in a little bit. Um, let's see here. I think we'll make the bullet, uh, let's, let's make the bottom section here a little bit smaller. So I'll grab all these uh, vertices here, just scale this in a little bit. And we'll grab the bullet and we'll make that a little bit larger as well, just a little bit. And just scale it down a little bit as well. There we go. And then what I would like to do is move this edge or the bullet so I'm in my move tool to snap to this part here. So what I'm gonna do is select this. I'm gonna go into, um, let's actually isolate this for a second in here. Um, let's grab those faces again because we need to delete them in a second anyhow. So go into face selection. Luckily they're already selected still. 
And over here, what we want to do is hold down V on the keyboard, click and drag, and hover our mouse to there. So now it's aligned with the other one. All right. And now with those faces still selected, we can delete them. And there we go. So we have this. We can exit um, isolation view now. So we have this one here, and we have this one. And now we can combine these, and then we'll bridge it. So um, yeah, should be OK. Um, all right, so now let's just see here. That shell casing might be a little bit thin for my liking. Let me just see over here. Um, just scale it in a little bit. There we go. All right, so let's combine these two. So I'll select both of these. There's a combine button over here. And then now what we want to do is bridge these two edges here. So, um, sorry, edge loops. So double click this one, hold down shift, double click this one. Right, so we have those ones. And then there's a bridge button right here. And depending on how it worked, you may need to play with the twist. But in my case, it worked well. Sometimes what I'll do is I'll check to make sure it merged properly. So I'll go into vertex, vertex selection. And I'll select this one. There's one there, awesome. And I'll select this one as well. And there's one there, perfect. All right. So now that top section is done, looks good. And now the bottom will work on next. So over here, right, what I want to do is add a few edge loops. So I'm going to go select the mesh, grab my multi-cut tool, and I want to put a loop right about here and here. And then I'll go into face selection, grab these faces, and um, over here, let's extrude that in. So just double check that's what we have. Cool. Extrude. And then we'll reduce the thickness a little bit. Going to about right here. Um, even maybe a little bit more. All right, and then let's go into edge selection. Grab this edge, and we're going to move this one up to here. There we go. And now let's work on the bottom. So over here, we'll go into face selection. Um, by the way, I just clicked off so that nothing selected. And now let's do our drag select. And again, pressing 4, make sure that's all we have. And then let's offset this. So we'll extrude, and we'll create a little bit of an offset. And we're trying to match that image. So over here, right, that distance. And yeah, let's create a bit more of an offset. And then I'll press G to repeat, do a second offset. I think that's enough space. And I'll select this one, hold down Shift, double click that one. And then let's extrude that up. Extrude, and we'll move this up to about right here. All right. And then the bottom, I want to add a couple bevels, right? So go into edge selection. I'm gonna bevel this one. So that looks pretty good like that. Um, maybe I'll reduce that ever so slightly. There we go. And then this one, I'll give it a little bit of a bevel as well. Um, this one, just a little bit less. So there we go. And then up here, um, I'd like to bevel this edge as well. And this one just a little bit, so something like that. Um, so I'd like to um, also add a couple highlights in these sections here, right? This one and this one. So let's um, bevel these ones as well. So and we'll add these to the selection. Um, and then let's bevel. And this one we don't need much of a fraction. So I'm going to go down probably to around 0.2. Let's take a look. All right. So we added the detail we wanted without having to add supporting edges and having to delete them later, right? This is what the topology looks like now, right? So it's pretty clean. It's a 1488. I was aiming for something under 2000 for this one, right? But mostly it's dependent on your viewing distance that you want. Maybe you have a close-up shot, it's for a cinematic, and you'll want to go um, a bit higher in the topology. 
but if it's something in game, you might even want to go a little bit lower because maybe the viewing distance is pretty far, right? Or there might be a lot of bullets. All right, um, let's turn this off and let's take a look. So let's add the blend material back to it. There we go. We'll take a look at the bullet now. So, and you can see it's pretty clean, right? Here's our bullet right down here. Um, we could uh, bake in some extra soft edges over here, but overall, I like that. So yeah, so there's our bullet. Hopefully uh, you enjoyed the tutorial today. Um, that's it for this one. We will see you in the next. This has been uh, Digital Dreambox, your destination for game art.